chug, 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 Welcome back to the Wizard Staff. I'm your host, Guy. And I am Blake. And we are two drunk novices who like to talk about EDH. We drink and swear, so you've been warned. Drink responsibly when you're playing children's card games. Mm hmm. So today we are talking about Ravnica Allegiance, the second Ravnica set in this trio of sets that the Wizards of the Coast has been releasing recently. <coughs> we didn't do a set review for Guilds of Ravnica just because we felt very uninspired. Unimpressed. They weren't really. Yeah, unimpressed is a pretty good word. Maybe there's like one or two cards that we kind of like. Yeah. We've we've kind of been shook enough, if you will, from shook. our <laughs> shook from our second episode, Core Set 2019, where we did a set review for that. And let me just tell you, it was a motherfucker <laughs> to review and to just then make the video. So we've been kind of hesitant to do set reviews since. Yeah. We did do a Ultimate Masters discussion. But that's more of just a bunch of reprin reprints than anything else. Yeah, this one's been giving us trouble too. But I, I hope that we can move forward and just <laughs> get better each time. Yeah, we will. We promise, folks. <laughs> All right. Okay. So today we got Ravnica Allegiance, the second set, as I've mentioned. So we're gonna go over a little bit about the lore first, and then we'll get into how we're gonna review the set. But for all you nerds out there who like lore to <laughs> magic, we got Nickel Bolas, the main baddie. He's up to something. And so during the last few sets, specifically the Ixalan series, he's been trying to raise an army and then also acquire certain artifacts to travel between different planes and prevent planeswalkers from retreating and moving between planes. So the Immortal Sun and Planar Bridge. He's had Frasca under his control, and he even made her Queen of the Golgari once he she obtained those. But when she went to go get these, she was with Jace, who had his memories wiped recently after losing to Nicola Bolas. And so once Vraska retrieves the Immortal Sun, Jace happens to get all his memories back. Frasca realizes that what they're doing together is wrong. And so what Jace does is he wipes Frasca's memories. And then once Frasca gets back together with Jace, when they're facing Nickel Boss, she'll remember everything and then they'll be able to take out down Nickel Boss together. Now on Ravnica itself, we got a couple things going on. We got Ral Izzet, who is the second most important Izzet character, has been monitoring the Ravnica plane for Nickel Boss and kind of telling him when the right time to strike with his army will be, th the, i.e. the Thousand Year Storm. And so since now Vraska is still influenced by Nicol Bolas, she was then ordered to kill the Azorius leader, Asperia, the Assassin's Trophy. And so that kind of begins the suspic this suspicion among the guilds that there is a traitor. Traitor! And so, not really sure what Ravnica Allegiance is going to be about, we do know that it's setting up for War of the Spark, which will be the climactic conclusion to this block. Mm -hmm. And the story will just kind of come out, I believe, the week of release. So by the, by the time this video comes out, we should have most of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So now, how are we going to review the set? First, we're going to talk about some notable, notable reprints. We're going to review each guild, the new mechanic in each guild, legendary creatures for each guild, and then any other notable cards that we have listed. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the best new mechanic, and then maybe, you know, give our thoughts on what our favorite legendary creature or new card is. I just want to say that uh, I am drinking for two tonight because Guy does not feel well. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Blake. Yeah, I'm taking. What are you? What are you drinking for us? Uh, I am drinking Jim Bean Black Extra Aged Bourbon. And what? What else are you drinking it with? 
uh, Dr. Pepper because I decided, uh, Man, you know, this episode, maybe I shouldn't drink straight alcohol <laughs> since I'm drinking for two. Yeah, it, good for you. It doubles up to pure if you think about it. Math. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so you get to see, you all get to hear me be a complete goof and then Guy just be like, judgmentally like, ah, this idiot, why am I with him? <laughs> You don't think I do that already? <laughs> when I'm when I'm not when I'm not shush. When I'm not in wait when I'm in evening. Who's the one? My thoughts here? are the same. <laughs> My shut up. <laughs> anyway, notable reprints, I guess. Mm hmm. We got the Shocklands. Yeah, that. Uh, like. I don't really care what else is in the set, just the fact that they're reprinting these and making them more affordable to my budget, I'm happy. <laughs> like, Yeah, these are some of the better kind of dual lands that you can't, you should be picking up right about now, mm -hmm. just because their prices are much more affordable. Mm -hmm. Almost beneficial, ben definitely beneficial in any like multicolor deck. Yeah, for sure. the only reason I haven't made a three color commander is the fact that i don't want to spend money on non-basics it's like mm -hmm. so hopefully these becoming cheaper it means i'll actually get into building three color decks mm -hmm. yeah because they ain't reprinting the dual lands anytime soon <laughs> i wish huh. oh well but we got absorb and mortify from this they got new art mm -hmm. that's kind of cool but that's kind of it though it's like thanks. Yeah, they're like, they're not like super EDH relevant, I guess. Yeah, a little bit, but mm -hmm. but we got those Ravnica Allegiance Mythic Editions, right? Woo! You know, I am really excited to see these new cards and well, not new, but these reprinted cards and this new art. But I mean, I'm just a little worried that they're going to do something similar to the Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition and sell it through the Hasbro site, oh. which was pretty shitty, and no LGS was able to sell them. So, tons of backlash, and... I, I really... I don't... I think that they learned their lesson. They even made those, like, apology letters. So, I'm optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. So, we got Karn, Scion of Urza, Tamiyo, the Moon Sage... Soren Markov, Jaya Ballard, Ajani, Mentor of Heroes, Dak Faden, Domri, Chaos Springer, and Kea Orzov, Usurper. Usurper. Any, any of those you're super happy for, Blake? Uh, I'm just not the biggest Planeswalker fan, just in general. I know lots of people are excited about Karn, Sion of Urza, because everyone loves Karn. Um, I... I like Soren Markov. He's pretty badass, but he made Avacyn. But that's Wait, what do you mean? Uh, I th I'm pretty sure. I mean, I could be wrong, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure in the lore, Soren Markov made Avacyn, Angel of Hope. Oh my god! I didn't even know that. <laughs> I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the lore. Don't quote us, but. <laughs> Well, we should always just put that as a disclaimer. Never quote us. Yeah, that's that's our, that's, that's our tagline. Maybe we should start. Us. Maybe we should start putting that in our intro. All right. So Blake, what's the first guild? Well, also before we get to that, I just want to say there are like no good artifacts in this set. We're just gonna. I just want to say that right now before we get into the guilds, there's no good artifacts, but we get a ton of planeswalkers. Okay. And if you're talking to me, oh, but they have a locket cycle. Okay. Even if I was on a budget, I think I'd still buy other things. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And and that I one... Mean, they did it for the other five, so I guess they have to do it for this one, too. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. Like, thanks, but... Even on a budget, I think you can still find better stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, yes, I will talk about Gruul now. Um, so with Gruul, green, red... We have the new mechanic of Riot. <clears throat> so a creature with Riot enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it, with, or with haste. Uh, the controller chooses which one they want. Um, this happens as the creature enters the battlefield. Um, no one can respond. None of your opponents can really respond to the choice. Um, 
Yeah, so for new commanders, this is what we're here for. We have, uh, I should have practiced these names when I was sober. I've always practiced these names when I'm drunk, darn it. Um, Nikia, the guy's just shaking his head at me right now. Um, we have Nikia. I'm sober. <laughs> we have, yeah, so you have no excuse. I'm gonna make more fun of you if you mess up on names. Um, we have Nikia of the Old Ways, three red green for a legendary creature centaur druid, five five. You can't cast non-creature spells. Whenever you, <laughs> whenever you tap a land for mana, you may add another mana of any type that that land could can, can produce. Um, it sounds a lot like Rurikthar in the sense that you can't, you don't, you don't, you want to build the deck around creatures, so that that's just how it is. It does remind me a lot of how I built my Jolta deck, which is also really heavily faced, based around the idea that you're building with tons of creatures in mind and those creatures then become your like utility cards so they're the ones that are getting you more draw because or like mana for instance and those are essentially what ramps out jolta for you so this is actually i know i just booed this but <laughs> i actually kind of think this would be kind of a cool build to see yeah i mean i don't really consider the fact that you can't cast non-creature spells a restriction that much it, it just really doesn't I don't know why but it, I think I feel like there's just enough good creature spells that you can just make this work and then hell mm -hmm. like you can produce twice as much mana and then you explain to me that if you have a land that can tap for red or green if even if you tap it for green you can also tap like then add red to your mana pool right because I don't know <laughs> take the new shock land that not the new shock land the any of the shock lands like if you tap it since it could produce either red or green you could add red and green because it's add another mana of any type that land could produce yeah so it's pretty nice i mean doubling your mana is always good uh so then we're going to move on to other notable cards we have rhythm of the wild one red green enchantment Creature spells you control can't be countered. Non-token creatures you control have riot. So I really like this. Um, it's the first time I've seen an effect like this where both of them, like making stuff uncounterable and haste are on the single card. Like we've seen prowling Serpopar, Serp Opard, <laughs> Spellbreaker Behemoth and Leyline of Life Force. And then we have haste stuff like concordant crossroads fires of yavamaya or fervor but like i've never seen it on both and it's only three mana like i'd accept this for five but it's only three and i'm just like ooh, this is good yeah this is definitely a powerhouse for gruel so i th this would be probably an instant include for the Nikea of the old ways deck if you were to build this especially because you could get this out much quicker than you could for her and then yeah yeah like like there's a good chance you can get this out turn three and even if you don't get her out get this card out turn three it's still good late game i think it's mm -hmm. yeah well not if you would have Nikea of the old ways out at that point yeah but I I can see I don't know if this will go in every red green deck. Uh, Definitely ones that are focused around creatures though. Yeah, but remember this is an enchantment, not a creature, so they might be hesitant to play this. Because if you play Rurik Thar, you're dealing like six damage to yourself, and you have to play this before you put out Nik Nikia. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think maybe this will go in Xenagos. I don't know. Any of you playing Xenagos, let me know. Um but I think it's good. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is a Planeswalker. Uh, Domri Chaos Bringer, four red green, Planeswalker. Plus one, add red or green. If that mana was spent on a creature spell, it gains riot. Negative three, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal up to two creature cards from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Negative eight, ultimate. You get an emblem mm. with 
At the beginning of each end step, create a 4-4 red and green beast creature token with Trample. In my opinion, it's probably the best of the three new Planeswalkers. I know we haven't even talked about the other two yet, but this one has good mana fixing, and then it has the additional ability that it would give them Riot, which is such a great bonus. It also comes into play with five loyalty counters, and it only costs four mana, which is a huge plus considering, you know, you can run doubling season, and then <laughs> just pretty much ult. Yeah, I was know. gonna say, I was gonna say just the fact that it's in green and you can run doubling season, it's like it's already a lot better than. <laughs> Yeah, better. and I mean, I think the emblem is a lot better than what people might think, just uh, because you, if you're playing like a four-player game, you get to ult, and then you go around the table, and then you have three 4-4 four, four red and green beast creature tokens with trample yeah, on your side of yeah. the field. Like in a standard four-player EDH game, that's like, what, 12 power and toughness just every turn of the table? Just like... Or, yeah, it would be six. Like, if you include yourself, that'd be 16 power and toughness. Each rotation mm -hmm. of the table. That's that's pretty damn good. I don't know. And it is trample. So. I agree with you there. All right. You got anything else, Blake? Nope, I'm good. All right. Next, we got Rakdos. And so the new mechanic for Rakdos is Spectacle, which is an alternative cost for cards. You can cast a spell for its spectacle cost if an opponent lost life during their turn. On some cards, the alternative cost is a discount, rewarding for hurting your opponents. Or for other cards, the spectacle cost is higher, but there's an additional reward for paying that cost. So it's always an option whether or not your opponent lost life that turn. So we got some new commanders, Rakdos the Showstopper. Four black red legendary demon six six flying trample. When Rakdos the showstopper enters the battlefield, flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp. Destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. <sighs> cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, everyone's kind of talking about how it's like, what do you do? Do you kind of just have to build it tribal? And yeah, there's a lot of, there's like no good, there's like no good devils, there's stinkweed imp, and there's a bunch of demons. Yeah, I, I do like the ability where flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp. That is definitely, I think, something that's more unique to a lot of other legendary creatures. Yeah, but I've also, I don't know, I'm also concerned with that too because it's like this is edh and there's a whole bunch of creatures and you're gonna have to flip a coin or roll a die for each of those creatures they're like there's easily like 20 creatures on the board every game and it's like i imagine that taking up a lot of time and i don't know like i don't know it just seems a little bit like i'm not sure if people are going to enjoy that level of gameplay where they're gonna have to roll a dice 20 times in a row or like even if you have like a like a random like number generator on your phone that'll do it 20 times or 30 times or however many creatures you need to do it for that still takes time and uh i guess we'll just have to see i guess i'll just have to play it to see how the gameplay works but i'm concerned mm -hmm. yeah yeah interesting ability maybe not the best for interaction yeah. next we got judith the scourge diva a one black red legendary human shaman two two other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, deal one damage to any target. So, I'm not 100% sure what ways to build around her. <laughs> I do like the fact that the damage can be done to any target, which combos well if you're trying to run Spectacle. But since you kind of have you know, the entire history of EDH. <laughs> Spectacle isn't, like, some magical new thing that's great. It just happens to be good for this set. Mm -hmm. But as you... Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, like, the problem with all 
like new mechanics is like you're always comparing them to the entire history of the game in eth so unless it's something Mm -hmm. ridiculous like dredge it's kind of hard so maybe that's not a very fair thing i don't know but i don't know i like the pseudo anthem on her um i imagine this is going to be like an aristocrats deck where you're just sacrificing a whole bunch of things and dealing damage to a whole bunch of things and maybe even get into a couple infinite loops but yeah yeah it seems maybe seems decent i do like how cheap it is i do like the fact that even if it's killed a couple times you can get it back a couple times fair enough Mm -hmm. we'll see next we got the haunt of hightower which is a four why is nobody else talking about this card (laughs) (laughs) it's a legendary creature come on guys Yes, so the the Haunt of Hightower is the buy box promo card, and it does feel like everyone has kind of skipped over it. Yeah. Like, what's going on? <laughs> is there something we're missing? It's like, I mean, I guess, t- yeah, talk about it. Okay, so it's a four black black legendary creature vampire, three three flying lifelink. When this card attacks, defending player discards a card. Whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Haunt of Hightower. So, yeah, cards like Torment of Hailfire would be really great for this. It is kind of expensive to get out at first, and it doesn't necessarily have the biggest body until you get it to start, Mm -hmm. like, attacking. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like a very big specter where it's like you hit somebody and they discard, and but it does get bigger and it has lifelink in black, which is good. But I don't know. I think the fact that it's six mana, it's not really worth that lifelink upside and the fact that it gets bigger. I don't know. But I don't know. Why are people... Why are people not talking about this? Like, EDH podcasts, like, this is a legendary creature. This is what we talk about. The entire format revolves around legendary creatures. Come on, guys. <laughs> not adding at anyone in specific. <laughs> nope. just Except all of you. <laughs> everybody except us. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now we're going to move on to some other notable cards. We got Pestilent Spirit. Two black creature spirit. Three, two, menace, death touch. Instant and sorcery spells you control have death touch. I just like to mention before I talk about this card just a little that when we were doing Corset 2019, Blake was very insistent that we included this one blue <laughs> oh my God. spirit creature. And as I'm going through the notes, I was like, Blake, why? And he's like, uh, Spirit Tribal? <laughs> and I was like, Is that even a thing? It totally is. No. It do- yes it no. is <laughs> okugachi spirit tribal i've played against it <laughs> and it's a no <laughs> yes <laughs> don't hate so, don't hate on obscure tribal man <laughs> whatever <laughs> but anyway this card right here no is actually kind of worth mentioning because of the last ability instant and sorcery spells you control have death touch so when if one of your instants or sorceries would deal damage to a creature that means that creature would die yes so Mm -hmm. what color of the color pie deals damage that like red so like now your lightning bolt can actually kill something congratulations (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's pretty cool yeah um i like it i like giving other permanent types things they shouldn't have it's cute it's neat Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's this tweet that josh made about this card where he was like trying to name all the examples of giving cards that shouldn't have keyword abilities keyword abilities um kind of like how the boros commander from dominaria was giving all its instants and sorceries like lifelink oh fire song and sun speaker yeah mm. I, I think it's yeah. e- uh, it's good it's 
good and people still don't play it a lot so it's not really an issue i don't think mm-hmm yeah anyway we got the devil black black red instant destroy target artifact creature or planeswalker it's no assassin's creed so assassin's trophy <laughs> what i what yeah like, you wrote down assassin's creed in the notes <laughs> Oh <laughs> no! Assassin's Trophy, which was like the card that everyone was getting super like jazzed for in Guilds of Ravnica, and ended up not being as great as everyone thought. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know. It's like Terminate or and Dreadbore and Rakdos Baby or Rakdos Charm all had a baby, and it's like all those abilities mashed together into one card. Mm. That's kind of how I see it. Mm-hmm. All right, next we got Theater of Horrors, which is one black and a red enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. During your turn, if an opponent lost life this turn, you may play cards exiled with Theater of Horrors. For three and a red, Theater of Horrors deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Seems. Okay, I didn't think that this card was that good and that, until I had to read it like three more times when I was not drunk. <laughs> And I was like, oh, this is actually kind of good. Like, it's kind of like, uh, worst case scenario, you like pay four mana to play the exiled card. And then it's not like outpost siege where like the, you can no longer play the card that was exiled at the end of the turn. Like it can stay exiled and you can play it like three turns later. And that's when I was like, oh wait, this card is a lot better than I thought. Never mind. Okay. This is interesting. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, just and like then, it just wins the game if you have infinite red mana. Just saying. Right. Like you can just kill everyone. <laughs> or in Blake's case, he'd probably just want to kill all the planeswalkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I can totally do that, can't I? <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh. <laughs> all right. Our rack. Our last Rakdos card is Captive Audience, which is a five black red enchantment. Captive Audience enters the battlefield under the control of any opponent you choose. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one of the following that hasn't been chosen. Your life total becomes four. Discard your hand. Each of your opponents creates five 2-2 black zombie tokens. Mm-hmm. What, what the <laughs> fuck? This card's insane. Oh my god. You have to really politic with your opponents, because once you have this card, you have to strongly interact with them to like make sure that they don't kill you. <laughs> I've been trying to think of what the appropriate order would be if someone was given this card and then had to choose, but it's kind of tough. I think each of your opponents creates five 2-2 black zombie tokens is the first one that you should do. Yep. And then, honestly, though, like, after that, it's kind of like, either way, you're fucked. Uh, or you could just be like me, where you're just like, oh, my life total becomes four. First time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, like, when I first read this card, uh, it was when I was drunk, and I was like, oh, it changes uh, to a different opponent each time. But no, this just targets one opponent. Like, if you just, like... <laughs> You just really want to dick over one person in particular just give them this <laughs> i think if you've started to notice a theme blake reads a lot of cards when he's drunk and doesn't realize what they're doing <laughs> shush <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah yeah uh, all right we want to move on to the next yeah we'll move on to the next one but i have to pour myself another drink first <laughs> okay so we're gonna talk about orzov now um, the new mechanic for Orzov is Afterlife, <coughs> and it's a triggered ability that includes a number. So it's like Afterlife and a number. Um, so, for an example, Tithe Taker has Afterlife 1. Uh, some creatures have higher Afterlife numbers than others, obviously. Um, when a creature with Afterlife dies, you create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. And the number tells you how many creatures tokens to make. So, that being said, we have a new commander. Woo! 
We have Tesa Karlov, two white black for legendary creature human advisor 2-4. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. So when I really thought about it, like both white and black can make tokens. I think white is a little bit better than black. Black has like Bitter Blossom and Grave Titan and a few other things, but I think white's a little bit better. Um, if you can make the tokens work, then cool. But um, I'm totally expecting this to just become uh, another one of those my opponents don't get creatures decks. An, an aristocrat deck. Um, I'm imagining people are just going to play Dictate of Erebos, Grave Pact, uh, so everyone sacks their creatures, and then people playing Harvester of Souls and Skull Clamp to draw all the cards. Um, I know everyone's been saying that, like, oh, she's basically Pan Harmonicon on a creature, and yeah, she kind of is. Um, I imagine this commander could even also go in the 99 of Alesha Who Smiles at Death or Karlov Regna commander decks. Um, that's what I'm expecting. I honestly don't have too much I want to say about this card. Because I said everything. Booyah! <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, guy. I think the art's cool, but like, I was just kind of like, I don't know. The, the the art the art is cool I don't but the art wasn't like super cool enough where I was like oh maybe I want to make a deck around this nor was the ability like oh I really want to make a deck around this ability it was just kind of like meh on both sides I guy you're ready to have no creatures <laughs> are you going to build a <laughs> entire new deck no just i'm so just i'm just creatures. saying when you go to an lgs you might see this because people are ex excited and are probably going to build this and then you're going to have no creatures because they're going to get double like uh, triggers on their grave pacts <laughs> you're going to have no creatures whatever that's why you run the best commander sigarda anyway moving on <laughs> we have other notable cards uh kaya orzov usurper one white black uh, for a planeswalker Plus one, exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. You gain two life for at least one creature uh, exiled this way. Negative one, exile target non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. Negative five, ultimate, Kaya deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile, and you gain that much life. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not that big of a fan. I like the negative one because it can exile like a soul ring or a mana crypt. I should we even include planeswalkers guy like see like I wanted to include planeswalkers just because they're like the poster children for you know every set and you know they're cool and sometimes I think they can be good but once we included the first one I was like okay let's include the second one and then you know the third one and I was like mm, okay only one of these I thought and the one we already talked about was actually kind of relevant to EDH. This one's not great at all. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to talk about a card that I think we're both really excited for. Uh, Smothering Tithe. Three and a white, enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts or draws a card, that player may pay two. If the player doesn't, you create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap sack this artifact, add one mana of any color. I don't really want to say this lightly, but... And I don't like really consider staples like a good I like a idea, but I think this that, that this might be a mono white staple. Yeah, I agree. I think this is one of those cards that should be purchased now rather than later, and just fear of people realizing how good it is. Because even if worst case scenario, you're only playing against three people, and none of those people have like good card draw. And they're just drawing like one card per turn that means on your next turn you're gonna have three extra mana available to you so like you play this turn four and then on turn five you have eight mana and then you cast something like avacyn angel of hope <laughs> yeah 
one of the big boys, big girls, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to buy this for your Avacyn deck guy? I think so, yeah. I know that there are a few cards that I want to buy for her to really get to optimize her a little more. It's because this is like the white Rhystic study because <laughs> nobody's going to pay two extra mana to draw a card. That's just ridiculous. No, nobody even pays one mana for Rhystic studies. So you're <laughs> you're just always going to get that mana. <laughs> so now we move on to Azorius and its new mechanic is Addendum. Ability words don't have inherent rule meanings, so Addendum is more of a label, if anything else. I don't subscribe to labels. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's found mostly on instants that have an additional or alternative effects if you cast those spells during your main phase. So if you're willing to give up a little flexibility, you are rewarded with extra potency. I think that this is actually pretty cool for kind of rewarding patience almost. Mm -hmm. None of the cards that I've seen with Addendum have been like super, like, I don't see any cards with Addendum where it's like, oh, I would really want to cast this now. Whereas it's more like, yeah, I think even just the best time to cast this card would be during my main phase. If you're thinking about it in that kind of scenario. Or you could look at it backwards where it's like, oh, it's weaker if you cast it at instant speed. But I, I'm trying to look at it with with the assumption that, yeah, I want as much value out of this card as I can get. Always look on the bright side of life. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Yeah. So we got new commanders. Well, a new commander, I guess. Lavinia Azorius Renegade, which is a white, blue, legendary creature, human soldier, 2-2. Two, two. Each opponent cast, can't, cost no, can't cast non-creature spells with converted mana costs greater than the number of lands that player controls. Excuse you. <laughs> Thank you. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. When everyone saw this card, they just lost their fucking shit because they were like, right. it's tier zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> This card is fine. I don't think it's like nearly as problematic as people are making it out to be. It's not. Yeah. It's not. I think I think it's it definitely was also again, I think we're seeing a lot of cards come out that are definitely like hate Tron. So That's what this yeah, that's part of what this card is. Right. It's and if maybe I think I've mentioned Tron already, but let me just give a quick explanation. Tron is being able to use like some of those lands where if you have all three out, you're able to get additional colorless mana, and then you just kind of ramp into like big colorless stuff really fast. That's why like Karn Scion of Urza is a big one because or Karn Liberated because those cards are <laughs> colorless planeswalkers and they just then happen to dominate. But like going back to what you were saying, where everyone was like complaining that she was overpowered, I think that's not justified at all. I remember reading a post and i quote this bitch needs to be instant banned and i'm just like all right don't be an asshole like we kind of said on our last episode people can play whatever they want to play and it's like i don't know like i was talking with park and because park played stacks and i asked him like what his like final thoughts were on this and it's like she's like not even that bad the first ability like isn't even really that good unless you're in competitive metas so it's like why bother? And it's like, it's fine, guys. It's fine. Like, I'm excited to see her. <laughs> like, it's going to be fine. I mean, the fact that she's a two drop, you can get her out pretty quickly. But other than that, yeah, I think it's fine. So other notable cards, we got our last Planeswalker that we're going to talk about, which is Dovin Grand, <laughs> Dovin Grand Arbiter, <laughs> which is a one white blue Planeswalker for plus one until end of turn whenever a creature you control deals damage to a player put a loyalty counter on Dobbin. minus one create a one one colorless stopter artifact creature token with flying you gain one life minus seven look at the top 10 colors of your library put three of them into your hand and the rest are on the bottom of your library in any random order of the planeswalkers we've seen this is like the middle one because the plus one is cool where if you have like a bunch of creatures swinging 
then you can get Davin up pretty high to then ultimate, and then you probably will be able to ultimate with him quite a bit. And then he does create Thopters, which can then protect him or you, so it's better. Yeah, it's like it. It's not the worst. Like, I like it in terms of like that plus one where it's like Hwatli Radiant Champion which I think more Planeswalkers should do, where there's, if you meet this certain condition, you can get multiple loyalty counters. I really like that idea, and I think that they should do more of that, because, yeah. Next, we got Mass Manipulation, which is Woo! XX, blue, 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 sorcery. Gain control of X target creatures and or Planeswalkers. God damn. So, with infinite blue mana... <laughs> Which are, <laughs> there are plenty of ways of making that. This card could just be like a fucking game ender because you're able to then steal everyone's creatures and then swing, or you can just dig everyone's planeswalkers. It's not as searchable as some of those other game ending cards, but you know, it's, I think it's a little spicy. Yeah, I agree. It's like, you don't even need blue. Like you just create infinite colorless mana, which is a lot easier and then have four blue, run this in a blue artifact deck. Yeah, it's not as tutorable as the other stuff, but it's it's a little bit spicy and I like it. And I'm, I'm going to keep it in the back of my mind for a while. We got High Alert, which is a one white blue enchantment. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Walls. Creatures <laughs> you control can attack as though they didn't have defender. For two white and a blue, untap target creature. This card's fine, I think. Yeah, I like it because it's like going to be used in the new art. It's still relatively new. The Arcades, the Strategist, uh, Legendary Dragon. And it's like, I appreciate it. I appreciate them not just constantly making new cards and then forgetting about them. It's like, it, it's very obvious with the design of this card. They were thinking that this would go in an Arcades Commander deck. And I appreciate that. Because you always want redundancies in your deck. Like, when you're. It's always great when a card that isn't your commander can be in your 99 because it's like well what if someone just like keeps destroying your commander well here's my card in the deck that just basically does what my commander does yeah it kind of goes back to that argument we were talking about with the mission briefing and snapcaster mage just run both yeah just run both it if you want this ability it's not like you want to pick one over the other unless if like you have no space for it but that's really even I guess in the mission breathing snapcaster mage scenario, it's more like, no, you want to run both of these, so get rid of something else. I also understand that snapcaster mage is a very high dollar card, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got veridity circle, which is two and a blue enchantment. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tap, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, you may draw a card. For a four and a blue, tap target creature without flying. It, uh, also, I'm kind of just like, man, on this card, it's fine. Yeah, okay, I guess it's more of I wanted to talk about this card. I don't know, it's a nice little tech card where it's like, it, it definitely is like, doesn't go in every deck. It's definitely like more of a sideboard card where like all your all your opponents are running a lot of mana dorks and you're just like, goddamn, I might as well just capitalize on this and draw a fuck ton of cards. Or like some, some, like this is... It, decent against stacks there's only a few things you can do against stacks and this is kind of one way to get around that and so i like it for that reason yeah and then our last azorius card before we get into simic which will be the longest fucking guild that we talk about <laughs> but we got angel of grace which is three white white angel has flash and flying like all angels not all angels have flash flying flake Oh, okay. I thought, you were saying, I thought you were saying flash and flying. I'm like, not every angel has flash, dude. I've been drinking a bit. <laughs> when Angel of Grace enters the battlefield until end of turn, that would reduce your life total to less than one. It reduces it to one instead. So it's a good way to, like, save yourself. For four, WW exile Angel of Grace from your graveyard, your life total becomes ten. So that's, it's nice if you get this card out, you're able to then block with it it dies you have one life left and then you can also use it again as kind of a backup where you're like 
Oh, I'm about to be swung for nine again. Let me just pay six white mana. Oh, my life total is ten. Now I'm back to one. Or, like, anything less than ten, I guess. It kind of just feels like you're delaying the inevitable, though. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like you want to delay the... Uh, no, I think giving <laughs> the ability to, like, have two more turns to, like, not die is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but... I think I'd rather just run like Resolute Archangel. <laughs> it does. This card does remind me a lot of that one and Exquisite Archangel. All these angels are just trying to like save you from the brink of death, man. Oh my god! It's like <laughs> that's what their purpose is, or something. <laughs> All right, now Blake, take us home. All right, so we're gonna talk about Simic. So strap in because we're gonna bust through this bitch. Um, we are gonna talk about. Adapt. Monstrosity. <laughs> yeah. Sick. I'm coughing. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're not drinking. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, so to adapt, you kind of have to check if the creature has plus one plus one counters on it already or not. If it doesn't, you can put the plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number after adapt. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, not like anything we've ever seen before, man. Wow. The one nice feature is if a creature loses its neg uh, plus one plus one counters, and there may be some advantages to get this, it can adapt again. So like even if the plus one plus one counters go away, you can adapt and then get them back again. I don't know. It's it's cute. New commanders. So holy shit. Prime Speaker Vanifar. Two green blue legendary creature elf ooze wizard elf ooze wizard elf ooze wizard ooze. that's so fun to say yeah. <laughs> it's fun to say two four i'll also read it it's tap sacrifice another creature search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost less equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost if that card put that card onto the battlefield then shuffle your library activate this ability only anytime you cast a sorcery so this is birthing pod on a stick that's really it so many people are losing their minds about this card. And I think rightfully so. Like, I watched a few deck tech videos for this, and pretty much once you get this card out, and if you have built your deck right, and you can just sack a one mana creature, it's you just easily go up the food chain. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you kind of climb up the ladder, the pod ladder, and like. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I will be. Everyone seems very hyped about this card. I'm going to be very interested to see how many people build this deck, play it, and then immediately disassemble it. Because, I don't know, I suspect a lot of people are going to be like, realize, oh, this is just the same combo every single time, with a little bit of versatility, and then they get bored of it and take it apart. I, I could be wrong, but I feel like a lot, that's going to happen a lot. <laughs> You're right. I think in the competitive world, sure you might want to keep this around because if you're trying to be competitive you want to be just consistent like this but like in a casual kind of format you or a casual playgroup i should say you'd probably want something that isn't just going to do the same degenerate stuff all the time yeah exactly it's either you kind of make it more closer to uh, competitive where it does the same thing every time or you kind of build it more casual where it's much more toolboxy -y. either one's fine I just hope people don't go in with a certain mindset and then get bored of it. I want people to enjoy the cards that they buy and play. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, less less interesting is Zigana, Utopian Speaker. Two green, blue, legendary creature, Murf Merfolk Wizard 4-4. Four, four. When Zagana enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one plus one counter on it, draw a card. Four green, blue, adapt four and each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample the only thing about this card is the last ability where it gives each other creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it trample like we don't really care about anything else like she's so much weaker than her former self yeah i think it would have been a little better if it was like if you control for every creature you control with a plus one counter on it draw that many cards Ooh, that would have been cool yeah because just one card for this is kind of like meh the ability to then say if you have like three creatures and each one has a plus one plus one counter on it then oh i can just draw three cards or if you had five or one thing i want to say is that i noticed right before we did this is that the, her previous version prime speaker zagana has this cool trident and now this new zagana is not called 
that. It doesn't have that prime speaker, and instead that prime speaker suffix has been added to Vanifar. And if you look in Vanifar's art, she's holding the trident that prime speaker Zagana was. So it's like, it seems almost like, I don't know about the lore because I haven't looked into it, but it, just based on the art, it appears that Zagana has gone down a rung and now Vanifar is in charge and kicking ass. Yeah, I think that's kind of been what's happening with a lot of these guilds is that because Ral is it is really trying to take over for Niv is it? I know that Frosca was recently like knighted as the queen of the Golgari. So I think that's a lot of things that have been happening recently is where other guild cards, legendary creature cards have been taking over as the new like head guild leader i guess uh then we're going to move on to other notable cards um i'm going to kind of rapid fire here we have spiral growth green blue instant draw a card you may put a land card from your hand into the battlefield it's basically explore all right then we have frilled mystic green green blue blue elf lizard wizard three two can i just say that's really fun elf lizard wizard elf lizard wizard. It, it it's <laughs> one of the better Simic probably did the best flavor-wise with all their creature types. Elf yeah. Ooze, Wizard, Lizard Wizard. <laughs> There's two so... more that we're about to talk about here in a second that I'm really hyped for. Yeah, it's just so fun. Lizard Wizard. <laughs> um, Flash. ETB may counter target spell. It's basically Mystic Snake. There's also, in another guild that we kind of skipped over, there's... Uh, Deputy of Detention, which is basically Detention Sphere on a Stick. There's a lot of functional reprints, and that happens every set, but we're kind of mentioning that here. So then we have Biomancer's Familiar, Green, Blue, Creature Mutant 2 2. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost 2 less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana an ability costs to activate to less than 1 mana. Tap. The next time target creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it had no plus one plus one counters on it. Yeah, we don't care about that. We care about the first ability. Reducing by two. Holy shit. So I know that I've at least personally been talking to you about this, Blake, where, man, this card is going to be like a kick-ass powerhouse for Thrasios. <laughs> and I did just order Thrasios. But I started like looking at like how I would build the Thrasios deck, and I'm actually not as excited as I thought I would be, because mm. Thrasios is just I like the art a lot, and I think you know it could be a tier one deck. But I already have like a tier one deck that I think kind of does exactly what the Thrasios deck would do, except so it was you, just it so just... you're gonna do so you're gonna do what's different and build a casual Thrasios deck. I don't even know if I'm now gonna build Thrasios. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the card because I like the art and I think the art is cool and yeah if I really do want to build a competitive version see I don't even want to take apart like my J stack like no you love that thing yeah I do so I'll have the card it'll be cool maybe one day it can just go in a different Simic deck I build but Biomancer is familiar if you are going to make a tier 1 Thrasios deck this is probably an instant include uh, we may have talked about that. I don't agree with that statement, but... <laughs> well, okay. You, you, you're right, because now that I think about it, those decks were just doing fine without this card. <laughs> Immediately takes it back. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to move on to Hydroid Crisis. Crisis? Crisis? Yeah. It's X, green, blue. Creature, jellyfish, hydra, beast, zero, zero. When you cast a spell, you gain half X life and draw X cards. Round down each time. Flying, trample, hydroid crisis enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Is this just a game to you, Watsy? What is this card? I think this is the best card of the set. <laughs> art wise, type wise, this card is awesome. I love this. I remember waking up and I was like, just wait, what? Oh my god, this is cool. This, I think, is what got me pretty hyped for Ravnica Allegiance, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> jellyfish tribal, here we come. <laughs> One day. I think we just need a legendary jellyfish creature. Uh, 
Oh man, I can dream. <laughs> I just want to build every single tribal deck ever. Anyway, we have Wilderness Reclamation, three and a green enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control. So this is kind of like Seedborn Muse, Sword of Feast and Famine, Awakening, but a little bit different from each of those. You're basically untapping lands and either using it for interaction, like in a Simic deck, like instant speed, answers, or you're kind of then immediately tapping your lands again to dump into a mana sink, like Crufix, God of Horizons, or Omnath, Locus of Mana. Just seems pretty good. I do like at the beginning of your end step, unt untap all lands you control. I don't, I mean, that's definitely not as powerful as Seedborn Muse or Sword of Feast and Famine, but it is an enchantment, so that means that it is a little harder to get rid of, so. That's I right, guess. son. That Blake, are you considering running this? Uh, yeah, I might run this in Sigarda. My no, no, I would not put this in Sigarda. Um, Sigarda has no interaction whatsoever. I'm just doing me on my turn. If you guys do stuff on your turn, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna kill you next turn anyway. Um, I might have put this in Tatiova because I'm making that more of a Simic control with Lands Matter sub theme. Uh, so I do like this card. I appreciate it. I love enchantments. I, oh god, I love enchantment so much. Anyways, another enchantment is Simic Ascendancy, green and a blue. Uh, one green, blue, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Eh. Whenever one or more plus one, plus one counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. If you have any, like, counter synergy, which I don't know, blue and green might have maybe i can't think of a single card <laughs> not a single uh like i mean when the game is all right <laughs> i see that they're trying to do a lot of synergy with monstra um i mean adapt <laughs> but on its own i think it's fine Add in doubling season. That's the answer to everything. <laughs> that's the answer to everything. Just add in doubling season. Or just some kind of multiplier, and this is going to be better. Yeah. There, there's a lot of plus one, plus one counter synergies in blue and green. So I can imagine someone playing this and then next turn winning very easily. Very, very easily. All right. Now we're going to get to end raise forerunners. Five green, green, green creature bore seven, seven with vigilance, trample, and haste. Wow. When this card enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. So, it's kind of like a small Crater Hoof Behemoth, or Decimator of the Provinces, that Eldrazi Boar that pumps your team. And This one is a little bit less powerful, but it's safer because everything has Vigilance, which the other two don't have. It's like... It's less powerful, which I like. So it's like less powerful, so you're less likely to kill people. But at least it's it makes you safer. Like you're not gonna have to worry with swing back. It's, if you're on a budget, I think this is a great card. I think so too. And actually, I hadn't even heard a decimator of the provinces, and now I'm looking it up, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, I like this. <laughs> but I do like the vigilance edition. I might want to buy this for Jolta. I have to think about it though, cause like I said that I, I, I keep mentioning this. I haven't even played this fucking deck, <laughs> and like I think I need to wait a bit. Yeah, cause that deck's just meant to be casual. It's just meant to have like big creatures in it, and so and raise and raise four runners seems like a good card. I'll give it that. Yeah, uh, I was earlier listening to Legendary Creature podcast, and they were talking about when they were doing their Ravnica Allegiance review, and they were talking about End Ray's Forerunners looking like a Koto from Princess Mononoke. That is exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, and then I was like, well, if that's the case, then Decimator of the Provinces is definitely when he becomes the demon, with he, when he has all the worms coming out of him. I like that. It's a good movie. Go watch it, guys. Probably my Princess favorite Mon studio... No, second favorite Studio Ghibli movie. Wind Rises is the best Studio Ghibli movie. If you have any opinions about that, you can, like, suck my dick. I'll fight you. 
Guy, I might have to fight you because I have a castle in the sky tattoo and it's the only tattoo I have and it might be the only tattoo I ever have. It's the best Studio Ghibli movie. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to fight after this episode. We're gonna have a different podcast. Ooh, ooh, we should each make a theme deck around our favorite Studio Ghibli movie. And then, like, <laughs> How would that even work? This- I don't know, Blake. You be creative. Ah, uh, I don't want to be creative. That's hard. <laughs> That's why, that's why I have you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, but but getting back on track, um, we have Guardian Project three and a green for an enchantment. When a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as a creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, to draw a card. Um, all I really had to say about this is uh, Grave Crawler plus Brexian Arena altar i mean sorry phyrexian altar plus this you just draw your entire library and that's cute it's just good in general i think yeah i think so too all right then we move on to a dank card shark toe crab two green blue fish octopus crab four four it has two green blue adapt two Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Sharkto Crab, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Shark Octopus Crab! <laughs> Is it a shark? Is it an octopus? Is it a crab? No, it's Sharkto Crab. <laughs> this really reminds me of that Ulamog altar that I've shared before where it's like Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger, and it's kind of like on this old horror movie post- poster I-, I can just imagine like kind of doing the same thing with shark to crab like it's shark to crab oh my god yeah well it honestly reminded me of like uh one of those kaiju uh on pacific rim oh yep yep you're right the only thing that i have to really say is this kind of reminded me of vorn clicks but a lot less impressive because <laughs> if you're able to get the adaptability to go off, which is probably pretty easy, but then, or have an have doubling season, this card can just <laughs> let you like start tapping stuff. And then even if Shark to Crab leaves the field and those cards have to stay tapped until like his ability has them leave because just because you have this ability out doesn't mean that he it goes away once he dies like Warren Clex. yeah love that card <laughs> me too yeah all right Actually, so I don't because i haven't even played it yet oh uh, you, guy you'll love it <laughs> it's <laughs> i know you <laughs> all right what do you so we're gonna like wrap this up now that we've talked about all the guilds uh guy what do you think was like the best mechanic of the set i'd have to go with either a Dundum or a Riot. Simic is just monstrosity. Afterlife, I think, could be kind of cool if you build your deck around that idea of you're going to board wipe with a lot of creatures that have afterlife, but there's not enough afterlife cards right now where I think that's going to be, you know, worth your time. Mm -hmm. Spectacle is also just meh. So... Addendum's fine. I think that it's always worth the wait. I mean, none of these are good as Surveil, which came out in the Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah. So, that's all I had to say, I guess. Yeah. I think, for me, I it might be Adapt, just because there are already so many pre-existing plus one, plus one counter synergies. But... I want to say Riot just because of Rhythm of the Wild. It's like I just can't get over the fact that both of those effects of making your creatures uncounterable and giving them haste are on a card together, and it's only three mana. I still, I'm still hung up on that. Um, the other Riot cards are complete Jeez, if meh. you love the card so much, why don't you marry it? <laughs> Maybe I will marry a card. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> okay. that would be the day. <laughs> There have been Stranger Things. I think a woman's, like, married a building before. I think I remember reading about that. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, yeah. I think Addendum's cute. It reminds me of, like, Return to Dust, uh, where... I don't know. It's good. I just think the other ones are better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are the, our favorite cards that we look forward to playing? 
Smothering Ties. I can't wait for people to forget about Smothering Ties triggers just like they forget about Wrist Study. It's gonna be great. Yeah. You're gonna be like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, guys, uh, I'm sorry, I just forgot, like, can I get those treasure tokens? And you're gonna be like, oh, okay, man, just, just put them on the board, but we, we don't care. Oh, and then they're gonna lose the game. I think, I don't know, like, what's worse, to uh, give your opponent mana or to give your opponent a lot of draw? I, that's a good question that I'm not sober enough to answer. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Maybe another time. Yeah. I'm excited for a lot of these like jellyfish, hydra, shark to crabs. Those are gonna. Those are cool. Really cool. Hmm. There's actually one card that I also was like, I kind of forgot to mention, and then I want to mention it here. But it's the salamander drake, where. It has it only costs one blue and it's one one and it has adapt four for seven and a blue, but you can pay for the I don't remember what the name is and then Blake's saying that they changed it, but it with this ability seven and a blue, you can pay for those or it costs one less for every instant and sorcery in your graveyard and if your deck's just built quite a bit around that you could get this card out for one blue and then say you have seven instants and sorceries in your graveyard okay it just costs one extra blue to adapt four so this becomes a five five flying really quickly i don't know i think it's cute i think you just are really thinking about this because you have your jace deck that wants to have instants and sorceries in the graveyard i mean i'm not thinking of it because i'm i'm not gonna run this in jace but i just i because kinda... you can't <laughs> it's well, oh, wait, you... we could take out Jace the Mind Sculptor. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do it. That card's not good. Get EDH. I have a Bye, little, Jake. I have a little like space on my desk. I've sent pictures on the Twitter before where I have like my Emrakul, which is banned, and I have my Leovold, which is banned. And now I feel like I'm just gonna end up putting Jace up there because I'm like, I have no place for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> do it <laughs> so okay <sighs> anything else uh nope i feel like we were a lot more successful with this than core set 2019 <laughs> yes we were yes yeah. we were i'm so proud of us <laughs> we've right. come a long way and i think that this is you know promising that you know when more for the spark comes out we'll do a set review for that yeah <laughs> that'll be fun i'm looking forward right. to that Thank you very much for listening. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Peace.